welcome back. And I've made this balance sheet so messy, I think it, it would make sense to, to redraw it, cleaned up a little bit. So what's our new balance sheet after we've unloaded a lot of those assets? Let me, assets. So now the book value, all I have now, I have a little bit of cash. Let me write that down. I had $1, $1 billion of cash. Let's say everything is in, well, I'll write the B there, so you know, $1 billion of cash. And just you know, you know, a bank needs cash to operate. It can't just use all of its cash to pay off things because then it won't be able to even transact with its customers or pay its rent or you know, send its executives on their Lear jets, whatever it needs to do. But anyway, you have one billion of cash. So you might have been thinking, well, why didn't it just use its cash to unload some of that debt? Well, you always have to keep some cash online just to conduct business, and actually that's called working capital. But anyway, back to the point of this video. So you have one billion dollars in cash, and at least the management of this company thinks that it has. Four billion dollars worth of residential CDOs, and this is the toxic stuff. That's the focus of of this government bailout, which is really historic in its proportions, and I'll talk more about that later. And then on the liability side, so liabilities, liabilities. What was left? I think I had called it loan C. I'll write liabilities in red, just because they're bad. They're not bad, but you know, they're something you owe, so they're not as pleasant. So loan C, and we said loan C was three billion dollars. Three billion. And then what is the equity? I'll do that in yellow. Equity. So the total assets were five billion in assets, right? Five billion in assets. Total assets. You have three billion in liabilities. So if you believe what the what what the accountants or the bank management has said about their assets. If you wanted to just liquidate everything, if you had five billion assets, you paid, you liquidated them, got five billion dollars, you paid off your three billion in loan, you'd be left with two billion dollars. So that's the equity, two billion dollars of equity. And just as a reminder, how many shares were there? I think I originally said in the original video that we have five hundred million shares, five hundred million shares. So each of those shares is one five hundred millionth of this equity. So let's see, the book value per share, let me write that here, book value per share is what? It's going to be the book value, two billion divided by five hundred million. So it's four dollars. Four dollars. Remember, it was six dollars not too long ago, but we had to take that, we had, what, that those commercial mortgages that we thought were worth ten billion actually ended up being worth um, Nine billion, so we lost a billion dollars of our book value, and a billion dollars translates to two dollars of the share price. Anyway, fair enough. And you know, maybe at this point, maybe at this point, the market value of the share. Let's say the market value. Market value. So that's essentially the stock price. If you were to look up this company's ticker price, let's say it's at one dollar, right? Because they're like, boy, you know, after all this Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, this is all getting a little nerve-wracking. So, and and they have this this shady thing over here, so we have to be careful. So, if if the market value is one dollar, what are they saying about the assets, or what are they saying about the equity? Well, that what well, was the market cap? It's the it's the share price times the number of shares. So that they're saying essentially that the market cap. And that's equivalent to the market value of the equity, or what the market thinks the equity is worth. That's one dollar times five hundred million shares, so that's worth five hundred million. Five hundred million, or point five billion. So the market is actually saying, no, you don't have two billion of equity. You only have half a billion of equity, and it's probably because they think this is worth a billion and a half left. But anyway, we'll we'll leave that aside for now. But now we're getting to the crux of the issue. Two of those other. Uh, Loans, they came due. No one was willing to renew the loans or give them new loans, so the company had to liquidate some of their assets in order to pay those loans down. Now we're, we're, we're kind of, this is the end game. We have loan C, and let's say loan C comes due. So they say, hey, you know what? Things are really shady. I don't, your, your assets, they look very similar to Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. We're not going to renew your loan. You go out to the credit markets. You try to issue bonds. You try to do anything you can. No one's willing to give you a loan just because they're all a little bit scared. So what do you do? Well, you have to pay $3 billion of loans. You just, you just have to, right? because no one's willing to give you $3 billion. Well, you say, out of this cash, I can't use all of it. If I just wanted to operate bare bones 
you know, maybe I could give 0.5 billion in cash, but that's not going to help my situation at all, right? Because that, that I still would have two and a half billion left. So you're like, wow, I'm in a situation where I have to sell these CDOs. So now, now all my models and all my assumptions are going to see if they were even vaguely accurate, right? If these things are worth really worth four billion dollars. So I go out there and I try to sell my my CDOs. I try to sell them for for whatever I can get for them because I have to sell them. And one, there's no market for them because just there's a lot of people who want to unload them, but there's not really anybody who's keen on buying it. So there there might not even be any market. But you're like, no, I want to sell them. So you just you know you broadcast it out to every hedge fund and private equity fund and every bank out there. And you say, who wants to buy my CDOs? And some private equity firm comes to you. Okay, well you know. I think that those things are pretty toxic, but um, they're probably worth maybe something. I'm pretty optimistic about the real estate market, and maybe in 10 years they they might come back. So I'm willing to give you, I'm willing to give you one billion dollars for that those CDOs, right? So essentially, you know, what's the market price of something? It's the best price that someone's willing to give you for something. So the market price of this, because you've shopped it around, you've gone to the market, you've gone to everyone you can, the market price for this is essentially the market is offering you $1 billion for this CDO. So what do you do? Well, if you sell it for $1 billion, does that help your situation? If you sell this for $1 billion, you get a billion dollars here, you have a billion dollars of cash, you have a total of $2 billion, that still won't pay your loan. You're still going to be bankrupt. And even more, these, the, the company management, they're very stubborn. They're, they say, you know what, one, if I sell it, I'm, I'm going to go bankrupt. And I think that that's some kind of fire sale price, quote unquote, that that's not the real price. All of a sudden, for the first time in my career, when I was getting, you know, when I was getting $30 million a year bonuses, I heavily believed in the market. But now I'm in denial of the market. I say, you know what, the only reason why they're, you know, I'm only getting a billion dollars for this is because everyone is afraid and these things if someone were to just hold them to maturity if someone were to just hold these assets for the 30 years over which you know their mortgage the underlying mortgages will just you know pay out someone's going to collect roughly 4 billion or maybe at worst 3 and a half billion so I'm not going to I'm not going to do this but really you have no choice. So what you try to do is you say, well, can someone give me some type of a loan? Can someone type it, you know, just just lend me some money in the short term just so that I could get this paid off. And I'll be willing to give this as collateral, right? Collateral on a loan is you give me a loan and you take this as collateral and if I don't pay the loan, you just keep the asset, right? And that's essentially what the Fed was doing. The Fed traditionally only gives loans if you give something really nice as a collateral, like you know treasuries or essentially just treasuries, and and they'll still take a little discount of your collateral. Like if you give if you give the Federal Reserve a dollar of treasuries, they might give you 80 cents of loans. But over this whole uh, credit crunch, the Fed has gotten looser and looser in terms of what it's willing to accept as collateral. So actually, the Fed, I don't I don't know the details of how toxic of an asset they were willing to take as collateral, but they were will they started loosening it up to pretty pretty toxic asset so maybe you could get a loan but let's just put that aside right now but this is the situation we're facing you have a bank and it's essentially being forced or it perceives it forced into bankruptcy even though even though it thinks that it has positive equity so you could get a loan from the fed or someone else if they're willing to take this kind of toxic stuff as collateral let's assume that they're not for now the other option is you can recapitalize. You can get someone to invest in the firm. You can sell equity in the firm and get some more cash to pay off this loan. If you can convince someone that, no, your firm is really in the future going to be worth a lot more, this is just a stressful situation. So you go to some sovereign wealth fund, and that's just a way of saying a, some foreign government that's co been collecting dollars because they've been selling this oil or cheap manufactured goods. So you go to those that look, you know, we are this super, you know, we're we're Goldman Brothers or you know we're Lehman Sachs. We are this this great brand in the banking industry. Wouldn't you like to have a piece of this thing that represents American capitalism? And they say, sure, you know, yeah, we, we, we'll we'll be interested in investing. So they they say, well, you know what, the market price is a dollar. And you know, I, I think you're that's probably a little distressed. So we'll we'll be willing to pay a dollar fifty per share and we'll buy I don't know, we'll buy let's see, how much do you need? We'll buy two billion shares at a dollar fifty per share. So what happens? So let's say the sovereign wealth fund sovereign wealth fund 
they're going to buy 2 billion shares 2 billion shares at $1.50 per share so now what does the balance sheet look like so 2 billion at $1.50 per share they're essentially giving you that that is equal to 3 billion dollars right so now you get 3 billion more in cash so this becomes 4 billion but you can't get something for free. So what? Where is what? What happened? Is, are our liabilities increasing? Well, no. Our our liabilities didn't increase. They didn't give us a loan, right? They 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 invested in us. They essentially bought shares of the company. They bought two billion shares. So what, how does that get accounted for? Well, instead of our share count being 500 million shares, this is how many shares before we had before, the company essentially created two billion new shares. So now the company has. 2.5 billion shares. So now we have 2.5 billion shares. And there's something interesting here. What is the new book value of the shares? So what are our total assets? 4 billion plus 4 billion. It's 8 billion of assets. Our liabilities are still 3 billion. Now our, the, the value of our share after the investment, and you could kind of call, call this the post value, the post money valuation or book value, is 5 billion. Right, eight billion minus three billion, and now what's the book value of our shares? See, five billion divided by five hundred. Oh no, sorry, but divided by two point five billion. It's two dollars per share. It's two dollars per share. So our new book value is two dollars per share, and that's interesting because it's someplace in. Two dollars per share. This is two dollars per share. It's someplace in between our old book value and the price that the company paid, right? They, they, or the, the sovereign wealth fund paid a dollar fifty per share. But anyway, I just wanted. I just realized I'm out of time again. I'll continue this in the next video.